Why African art? Because African art is a part of my heritage and it's a part of the world heritage because all of what we call modern art really started with African art and uh, so it's a part of me. Yes, my name is Paul L. Hamilton. I grew up in Keblo, Colorado, a uh, steel town. And one of my motivations to go to college was never to work at that steel mill. We, we grew up poor, but I didn't know that we were poor. My stepfather worked at the steel mill, and uh, our street was unpaved at the time, and eventually got paved. And I didn't realize I was in a poor area until I went to college. Then I went to the University of Denver with no money, and uh, I began to see a greater world. I went to Hong Kong, Japan, and the Philippines, the first trip. Then I wanted to go to Africa, because that's where I really wanted to go. I was very interested in, in African history and African American history. I went to Africa, but not knowing much about art. And then I came across a man named Peter Natan, who really taught me about African art. And traders began to come to me, and the madness took over. How many pieces do I have in my collection? <laughs> I think around 800 pieces. Ages of the pieces that I have vary considerably. Uh, I have some pieces that are, are fairly new, uh, modern pieces like the last 30 years that were made. But most of the ones that I really like to get are at least 100 years old, uh, 80 years old, that type of thing, where you find it's more of a traditional thing that was done for their personal use versus just a commercial use. This is a fang piece that was obviously used in, in voodoo rituals. This is an example of an ibiji, which is from the Yoruba people. When a twin died, they would carve one. So here's one, and here was the other one over on this side. So those are very nice. A lot of what we would call tribal art has a lot of similarities uh, because tribal people uh, take nature and it's not a fight against nature it, it, you're you're a part of nature and the animals are part of you and so in the art of African art particularly you see symbolic animals in there and you see human figures all mixed together African art particularly is a foundation of what we call modern art and Picasso everybody knows Picasso was greatly influenced by his collection of African art. He was not the first of the European artists to really discover African art. And at that time, they didn't even call it art. They said, well, that's, you know, craft. But they looked at it as art. And Picasso not only took the mask of some of them and put it in some of his most famous paintings, but he took the shapes and so forth. And there's a book that has his collection and uh, in there you see a lot of the pieces and they explain where he got them, how he was influenced, and of course uh, you got Clegg and other people that greatly used African art. What I would really like to see is a creation of a museum cultural research center where all of the art is together, where artists can come and work and get inspired by it. And then also the books that I have. I have over 2,000 books and magazines on African history and African American history and that they could be a place to work, but not only work, but also perform. And that would be my ideal thing that that would happen, not 50 years from now, but like in the next five, 10 years. Mm -hmm.